Oh, well, I'm not really scared of uh, presenting, but I'm scared of Samuel's timekeeping. <laughs> Uh, well, I'm Manzuma and I'm presenting uh, School Education System in Bangladesh. Uh, the other co-author is Kusakabe Tatsuya. He hasn't been able to be here. So Bangladesh has inherited its education system from British India and um, earlier it was part of the Greater Bengal in Northeast India and then later emerged as Eastern Province of the Islamic Republic of Pakistan uh, in 1947, uh, the termination of the British colonial rule. And later it emerged as a sovereign nation in 1971. So from the time of the British rule to the Pakistani regime and then the, Bangla uh, the Pakistani system and then the Bangladeshi system, so the education system has not only evolved in methods but also in fundamental characters like language and governments, go governance. So f through history, Bangladesh has seen a lot of phases in its education system. So some of us, uh, us are aware of the colonial history in the Indian subcontinent. I'm still going to write it through a uh, brief description of this. So in the pre-colonial era, indica in, uh, indigenous education was in place, which mainly emphasized the agrarian context. Uh, so after that, uh, we have this modern education system, but prior to this, uh, the, uh, like at the onset of East India Company's arrival and its move towards education prompted to the Charter Act of 1823, which gave grants and aid to education and formed a directorate of public instruction that could administer grants in uh, aid. And during this time, missionaries were allowed to go for teaching and community support was still existing, making the system more centralized. So, you know, um, just, Samuel, please don't count this time. <laughs> so this chapter that I'm working on is uh, also sharing information on the two major school of thoughts, the Orientalist and the Anglicist, and then Macaulay's Minute on Indian Education in 1935 and how William Bentinck's decision on the English medium of instruction has to shape the modern education system. And then we move forward to the Bengal Rural Primary Education Act 1993, which actually introduced a compulsory universal primary education. And under this act, district school boards were created and they were responsible for arranging school budget and establishing new schools. So from 1947 to 1971 onwards, um, so in 1947, uh, the partition of India created two new nations, India and Pakistan. And Pakistan was composed of two areas, the East Pakistan, presently called as Bangladesh, and West Pakistan. So East Pakistan ruled and administered West Pakistan, uh, sorry, West Pakistan ruled and administered East Pakistan. And uh, discrimination was made in terms of funding allocations, also in infrastructure. So allocation of education funds were not like made towards uh, East Pakistan. I mean, it was discriminatory in nature. So histor although historically East Pakistan enjoyed a higher rate of gross enrollment in primary and secondary education compared to West Pakistan, still such kind of discriminations were made. Uh, so West Pakistan not only discriminated in terms of social, economic, political grounds, but also wanted Urdu to be the national language of both the wings, the East and the West. Despite having only, you know, 98% people speaking Bengali in the East Pakistan region, and only 5% spoke Urdu in the West and the East region, because Punjabi was uh, fastly spoken in this uh, Western region. So this led to the emergence of the 1952 language movement, which actually helped establish Bangla as the national language of East Pakistan. And after that, uh, because of this economic mil um, you know, maltreatment, Bangladesh emerged as a sovereign nation in 1971, separate from the Pakistani regime. So after it emerges as a sovereign nation separate from the Pakistani regime, um, both 
English and Urdu were abolished and all the English medium schools that existed in part of the present Bangladesh were also abolished in 1972. And in 1987, we have this Language Act which emphasized Bengali to be used in all spheres and this was actually only imposed on the public sector, the government sector. So private sector could use English and also promote English. During the Pakistani rule in 1957, all functions of district school boards were transferred to the district magistrate. Uh, the reason I'm reading this out is because of the interesting decentralization to centralization and again reverting to uh, decentralization again. During the Pakistani rule in 1957, all functions of district school boards were transferred to the district magistrate and by 1962 education, however, became fully provincialized so that the respective governments were responsible for management and finance of schools. Despite this, community involvement still existed. In 1974, the Primary Education Takeover Act, uh, led to the nationalization of all the primary schools in Bangladesh. However, the, uh, so I'm really sorry, like I have to. So the Primary Education 1981 uh, Act again took it back to centralization, but in 1983 it went back to decentralization. So the governance, in Bangladesh the primary education especially is being governed by two ministries. And that's what Manzur Ahmed calls the dilemmas of the education minister because he doesn't know which ministry to represent whenever he's going for international uh, uh, meetings. So the Minister of Education, MOE, and the uh, MOPME is responsible for primary education, whereas the Director for Second and Higher Education is concerned with policy form formulation, planning, uh, monitoring of the secondary and higher education. So like the school education system in Bangladesh, schools in Bangladesh are shaped by colonial heritage, Bengali culture, and also Islamic influence. So we see the socioeconomic divisions, power structure, political dynamics have resulted in the development and coexistence of three parallel education systems. So we have these vernacular language schools, we have English medium, and we have faith-based schools. And these are governed by both public and private sectors. So the Constitution of Bangladesh uh, in 1972, along with the Primary Education Act 1990, uh, provided for free and compulsory primary education. And there are 25 types of primary education in the country, ranging from the government to non-government and other private sectors. So this pre-primary education, although it was promoted basic, mainly by the private sector, but the government also took initiative in 2001. Uh, although it failed, could not really promote PPE, but in 2010, along with uh, the help with the NGO, especially BRAC, it started again promoting uh, PPE education, and it is now part of the compulsory education. In the early 1980s, Bangladesh recoursed again to denationalizations and opened up primary and secondary education sectors to the private institutions, for example, for instance, NGO schools or in like the non-formal provisions provided by the NGOs specifically. So the majority of the private schools at the secondary level are government uh, aided and they are highly dependent on the government for teacher salaries. Now these English medium schools which existed even during the uh, Pakistani regime uh, and till today the Bangladesh government follows the Registration of Private School Ordinance 1962 Act and during this time Bangladesh did not really exist. It was East Pakistan and we still continue to follow this act. So this, uh, I really need to focus a little bit on the Madrasha education system because it's quite interesting field in the country. So Madrasha Education Board was set up in 1979 and these all are actually part of the political agendas because this does not exist during the liberation war because that time the political parties had um, secular ideologies. However, after the, the, that government happened to collapse, the, the subsequent government star promoted Islamic education. That was one of the, their political uh, drives towards getting more votes. 
So state incentives to cover 90% of the teachers' salaries were established. So that means the government was heavily funding this madrasa education. The two main types of education, Alia Madrasha, which is uh, governed by public sector, and this Kaumi, which is being supported by uh, national and international donor agencies. And by donor agencies, I do not really mean these uh, international organizations, but these are some individuals or some Islamic organizations supporting this madrasa education system. So there's another kind of Hafizya madrasa, which does not really come into light that much because it's just focusing on the memorization of the Quran, the holy book of Muslims. So in 1980, the government introduced programs to modernize the madrasa education system through curriculum reform. And through this act, the Kaumi madrasas, which are being mainly run by the private sector were asked to uh, bring in the modern education subjects like the English, maths, Bengali. And if they, if the Kaumi Madrashas follows, followed this instruction, they could also get subsidies from the government. Uh, technical vocational education offers education from the secondary level in the country. The requirement to enter TVA is completion of grade eight and the certificates programs for two years is offered from grade nine in vocational training institutes. National Skills Development Council formulated the National Skills Development Policy 2011 to contribute and strengthen the national economic and employment. However, although the policy pointing right directions, but yet it does not show concrete results because there's no linkage between, give me one more extra, one minute extra, between skills and jobs. Okay, so the non-formal education, uh, these are for the children who have not been able to continue their education. So this is giving a second chance. The assessment system is very interesting because we have these board examinations after grade five, eight, 10, and 11. And even in grade three, there's national assessment, uh, student assessment is being conducted on maths and Bengali. So the inclusion and exclusion of children deprived of education, disparities exist in effective coverage of social services in terms of geographic regions, rural, urban, gender, wealth, ethnicity, and other dimensions. So the national development mask white regional disparities across urban slums, disaster prone areas, geographically remote and isolated places such as uh, these river islands, wetlands. And in Bangladesh, for the very first time in 2010, we have this national education policy Prior to that, we had many commission report, but none came to existence because of this political reason for the secular or not being uh, non-secular or uh, driven too much by the religious ideologies. However, uh, we have this national education policy in 2010, which lays out many uh, directives, but these are yet to get implemented because uh, the national education policy talks about giving elementary education until grade eight, but we still have our uh, compulsory education until grade five only. Some of the reform initiatives, we have this PDP-1 primary education development program. The first one was actually uh, project-based, so it did not really work out well. And the second one, uh, uh, it focused on expanding access and quality. And uh, the third one, it focused on uh, again, uh, access quality and then equitable primary education. And during this time, we actually were able to implement pre-primary education and also have been able to successfully distribute free textbooks to more than 90 million children. And the PDP-4, this has just started, so we do not know the implementation status yet. So there's not much talked about the secondary education in the country because the focus is much on the primary education system and that's because of the 1990 EFA to the MDGs to the SDGs now. So the, the secondary education or the higher secondary education, even the, uh, the, the tertiary education system are the most ignored area in the education landscape of Bangladesh. So just like the uh, Bangladesh scenario of how little emphasis has been given to the secondary and the higher secondary education, my chapter is, has also given very little focus on the secondary and the higher, educa uh, higher secondary education. Thank you for the reminder. The, just a little bit of the budget, okay? So in South Asia, Bangladesh is the 
country which spends the lowest amount of budget in education and most of it goes back to infrastructural development or teacher salaries, so there's not much focused on the quality or equity issues. Thank you, Samuel. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm the big bad wolf in this process, but um, may I ask for comments and questions? Uh, I want to know uh, what's the uh, status of science and research in Bangladesh, uh, because importance of mostly given to madrasa studies. Um, well, importance is not only given to madrasa studies, but it has also been given to uh, general education, uh, especially to the science and humanities. Uh, more than humanities, the focus is mainly on com commerce education. So for the STEM education, we do not really see. First of all, you'll hardly find literature available in Bangladesh. Every time you want to write a paper, you have to only depend on one person, and that is, I'm sure some of you will be aware of, Manzur Ahmed, the prominent educationist in Bangladesh. So it's not that, that the focus has been given only on Madrash education. Yes, it is for certain clientele group that who is receiving this education but there is focus on stems also but not that much although the government has this vision 2021 which incorporates digital uh, which promotes digitalization and is also incorporating ICT in their education and having said that I do not really mean ICT means science just science in general but yes, it is still yet to work because we have focused so much on access and completion, but we haven't really focused on this science education or the other educations or the content itself. Um, in India, madrasa education is recognized only by a handful of universities. So those who have gone through madrasa education can get into higher education only in certain universities. What's it like in Bangladesh? Well, all the, although we have different kinds of school in Bangladesh, for example, uh, the general education system, we have this uh, Bengali medium schools, which is being provided by both public and private sector. And then we have English medium schools, which follows different international curricula. And at the same time, we also have national curricula. And these are pretty expensive and only you know, catered for the upper class. Whereas the Madrash education system, it's targeted for the poor children only. And although the, uh, the study says that you know, there's little horizontal movement across these disciplines, but yes, the Madrasha is also offering general education, general education such as maths, Bengali, science, English. So there is chances for going to the mainstream uh, universities, uh, not just going to you know the Madrasha higher education. I have to close the session, and I'm I'm aware that it's impossible to, in 15 minutes, to give the full expense of your. Uh, expanse of your uh, chapter, but at least you've given us a snapshot. So thank you very much. Thank you. May we thank you.